Back to Dr. Phil. On today's episode, we've got a, a controversial young man sitting in the seat next to me. His name is Taylor Trandall. Now, I decided to bring him on the Dr. Phil show because Taylor was actually arrested, a juvenile arrested by the police because he slapped his mama over her not making him pizza rolls. Can you believe it? Uh, we have him here. Taylor, what do you have to say for yourself? How am I supposed to finish level 72 of Minecraft if I don't have pizza rolls to sustain me. Now, my mom needs to have those ready sir, on the double. Taylor, Taylor, I don't know what this Minecraft is and all this hoop hollering is, but you know what I'm going to have to do? We're not even going to do the episode today, folks. You're going to the ranch. Dr. Phil, no, please. <laughs> you are going to the ranch. Uh, guys, that was my best interpretation of what Dr. Phil was to me uh, before my experience with the show. Dr. Phil was just some guy on my television who was sending kids to the ranch for being little, little bad kids with their mom and dad. Uh, but now... Dr. Phil is talking political and cultural issues. I got to go on his show. Taylor got to go on his show. And we're going to talk about that today. Let's get into it. Welcome back and happy Monday, guys. I'm here and I'm alive. Guys, I got... COVID. <laughs> yeah, Taylor's like, she got COVID. We back up in here. It was just, it was unfortunate timing. I was trying to like, we're back. And then you went really sad right after. So, my bad. No, guys, I'm fine. Uh, it turns out natural immunity and my, my normal immune system works. Wow. You're here. You are. Yeah. I mean, CNN would have said something different, but I, in fact, got COVID in the, the natural order of things without being vaccinated. And I was fine. I lived to tell the tale. Amazing. Like you you held out a long time, all the way till September 2022. I like, know what? That's like two two years and some change on, on COVID. And I got it. I'm going to be honest. The first few days was not fun. It was a kicker. That was a rough, a rough little bit of sickness for a little bit. Nothing I couldn't handle, obviously. But we're back after a little bit of a break. Taylor went to Norway. So I did. Yeah. He got a vacay. Ancestral homeland. Yeah. I was like, oh, this will be fine for me to step away. Amla's got it. And our, our guy Scott had to end up running yep. the show. And I nearly die. Yeah, yeah, you end up sick, so it's fine. But uh, another thing that happened last week is on Friday, an episode of Dr. Phil came out that featured me and Taylor Trandall. <laughs> For like one stumbling sentence. No, time. whatever, whatever. We <clears throat> went on there and we talked about cultural appropriation. And I kind of want to talk about the background of getting on the show and all that fun stuff. Uh, and then we'll react to some of the episode and read some of the hate comments that we got for being on Dr. Phil. People were pissed, man. They were not happy that good old mustache. Dr. Phil was talking about political issues and he's very base by the way for the most part I mean I've seen other episodes on other issues but I'm going to talk about our episode and our issue of cultural appropriation so I got reached out to because apparently people found the show uh, our show in multiple episodes we were doing on cultural appropriation where I was just saying I think it's BS I think it's a form of appreciation I think we should be able to step into other uh, other cultures and that should be something that we appreciate and uplift as a society and they found it and invited me on and they said you know we're going to have some interesting people on the show. We're going to have some people who think that white people shouldn't be able to wear braids and dreadlocks. We're going to have a woman that thinks you need to give credit to the cultures that you make certain foods from. And I was like, heck yeah, I'll be on. And then they're like, yo, let's have Taylor on too. And Taylor, obviously, sure, not? yeah, he's not used to being on TV. What was your reaction? I mean, my reaction was just like, uh, sh sure. The only reason I would say no is because I'm scared and I'm not really scared. So why not YOLO? Right. I mean, like we have the truth on our side for when it comes yeah. to an issue like this. Yeah, we talked about it before. I'm like, what could their arguments possibly be that are pro? We've like racked our brains for like how you you would succeed in uh, advocating for being offended by culture preparation. We just couldn't find it. So we just could not find it. So anyways, we get to the day of the filming. We show up and we are ready to go. I filmed two episodes of Dr. Phil, by the way. So the first one, cultural appropriation came out. That's actually the second one that we filmed. I filmed another one on uh, affirmative action, and that's going to come out soon, hopefully within the next couple of weeks. So you guys will get to see that one as well. But uh, this first one came out when we got to the studio. I'd never been in on like a TV set. Dude, that shit was old. It was like from the <laughs> 80s. 80s. Yeah. I mean you were, she's been on Candace Show a couple of times. Candace Show. They're yeah. they have it together at Daily Wire. Like that was really immaculate, did. beautiful, great snacks. This one they kind of had like a 
a microwave at the end of the hallway with some dry bagels on it and some right. lukewarm juice. It was like, here's your breakfast. Yeah, so. Dr. Phil's like, we've been doing the show for 20 years and not a damn thing has changed since we started. <laughs> like, straight up. I was like, mothballs, old school makeup artist oh, hair. <laughs> it's no wonder the Cash Me Outside girl was a little on edge that day. Yeah. <laughs> ready to fight after that bagel she <laughs> ate before going on the show. Anyways, we go out and film it, and it was just a straightforward episode. We went from start to finish, no breaks really in between other than the short little commercial breaks, and we just started talking the issues. We're going to react to some of that today before we get into the hate comments that uh, ensued after the show aired. Let's react, and I'll try to give you a behind-the-scenes view on what was actually going on this day. Uh, I will let you know. The set was cold. Boy, I felt like I was in an igloo sitting there. And I don't know if that's a tactic they use to keep everybody alert and awake when they're filming. But just picture me freezing during this whole thing. Today on an all new Dr. Phil. Cultural appropriation. I got called all sorts of names for wearing the dress. You actually got death threats. You were called out for appropriating an anime character. I was told that I was black and not Japanese. So dramatic. I think imitation is a form of flattery. That's if somebody me. wears their hair like you're wearing it, you put that on the same level as racism. Same level as white supremacy. <laughs> I want you to take a look at these pictures for me. Anything jump out at you? Yeah. Does anything jump out to you guys about these pictures? I feel like I'm like watching Dora the Explorer. Um, <laughs> no, I guess I see a lot of people who are quote culturally appropriating. Boo, tis tis tis. They're in costumes. Not all of them are in costumes. Kim Kardashian is just wearing her hair in braids, and Justin Bieber is just wearing what looks to be some sort of like Japanese headband of some sort. But I digress. Right, they're in costumes. These are all celebrities who have been called out criticized mm -hmm. and condemned mm -hmm. for cultural appropriation. Has anyone here ever called someone out for cultural appropriation? You mm -hmm. too? You mm -hmm. have? You have? Okay, so for those of you who don't quite get what's going on here, the side that's showing right now, those uh, three people to the right are the like pro-cultural appropriation. It needs to be police. We need to do something about it. And then you have my side, which is me being the person who's like, I don't care about cultural appropriation. And then the two girls next to me are two girls who were accused of culturally appropriating. And one of them was pretty left-leaning, you'd say, right, Taylor? Yeah, girl with so. the big Talking hair. A bit, yeah. yeah, she was pretty left leaning. And then the other one was like, yo, I don't get it. Also, if you guys drop a super chats during the show, we will read them at the end of the show. So Taylor will compile those or I'll compile them and we'll get to them at the end of the show. Plus, if you like the content, please like, subscribe, click the notification bell to be notified every single time we go live, every single time we post a new video for you guys. And we have a survey that you want you, you guys to fill out. It's in the description down below. Just let me know how often you're watching the show, what guests you want to see on the show, what topics you want to see a talk talk about on the show, because we want to curate this content for you. We want stuff that you actually want to watch. I don't want to make stuff that you guys are not interested in and don't want to watch. So fill out that survey. And also in filling out the survey, you will be signed up for our newsletter. You'll get personal emails from me, plus an exclusive once a month uh, video that only people on the email list get to see. You'll be the first to know when we have merch. We're making a Discord for you guys so that we can have a little community and talk to each other outside of these platforms as well. So fill out the survey, put in your email, and you'll be signed up. Okay, moving on. Has anybody here ever thought twice about wearing something or doing something, even cooking something, out of fear of being accused of appropriation? I was like, nope. They relied on my face like so hard for some of the reactions to this stuff because I was being so animated about like absolutely not. I disagree. What are you saying? You have? Yes. Yeah, what was it? Um Oh we lost picture. Daughter. Oh. As Our we cable. always do. We're trying to figure this out, guys. We have the worst cable in the world that keeps disconnecting, so sorry. Yeah, we're gonna get this figured out. Okay, so this lady just said that she has been worried about appropriating another culture and we're gonna hear about exactly why. Braids and she wanted me to get braids that were just like hers. Why her, but not you? She's um, half black and half white. Okay. And so I just think that some things should stick with those cultures. Well and look at the doctor. Okay, so the guy in front, 
in little glasses. His name is Dr. Neil Lester, and he was, of course, on the we need to police cultural appropriation side of things, and he's nodding the head while this woman says that. To me, I hear that woman, and I go, absolutely get braids if your biracial daughter is asking you to get braids with her share that experience with her go through getting your hair done together go through having a very similar look it doesn't matter that she's biracial and you are not biracial and you're you're not part black nobody should care about that have the beautiful experience with your daughter but instead this doctor in front of us which i believe he was like a doctor in like english or something well <laughs> it's like, yeah i thought i mean you would i would have said critical race theory but sure no yeah i'm pretty sure it was like an english doctorate it's like saying you know dr jill biden should be the, the <laughs> surgeon general or something like that but i digress anyways he's like nodding his head saying oh yeah you did the right thing no you didn't no matter whether you believe it's harmful or you think people should just be allowed to do what they want, there is no doubt this is a hot button topic that people are passionate about. Dr. Neil Lester, a professor of English at Arizona State University. Professor right? of English. There it is. And there it is. Published lectures I just and wasted a Google. extensively <laughs> the area of African American studies. What do you think about appropriation? Do you think this is a real thing, something that people need to be cognizant of, and if so, why? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, well, because if, if we, in fact, are trying to look at the humanity of other people, and we are trying to live in a place where we are trying to be respectful and mindful of folks, then we need to be aware of things that are important to other cultures that don't necessarily look like us or share the same values. So it is a thing, and people need to be aware of Can anybody appropriate? Uh, anybody can appropriate, yes. Not just white people. Uh, absolutely. A yeah. Appropriation is intersectional. So oh, old people can appropriate youth culture. We should have done a drinking game for all the leftist buzzwords. <laughs> intersectional, boom. Take a shot of tequila with that one. Uh, yeah, so he, this guy, where, where do I start with this guy? This dude was so condescending the entire episode. And I'm sure if you guys got the chance to watch the episode in full, you probably gathered that a little bit. I think they edited much of the stuff that he said because he went on these just long-winded rants of, you need to read this book and you need to read this author and you need to get read up on this and you need to unlearn and relearn and all this crazy stuff about cultural appropriation. And he talks about respect and humanity. You know, you can have respect for people and their humanity without having to worry about whether or not the hairstyle that you're wearing is from a different culture or the food that you're cooking in your kitchen is from a different culture. We can share these things, and that is a form of respect for humanity. Eating another culture's food, wearing their hairstyles, wearing their clothing, uh, adopting from their culture is respectful. You know, I to utilize something in my life to me is a form of respect. And to think that we have to just give out credit and shout out certain cultures for the things that we do is just unbelievable, in my opinion. And after the show, <laughs> he like walks up to me and he's talking to me. He's like, oh, I really appreciated everything you have to say. He's like giggles at me and I'm like, oh, thank you. Yeah, I, I love coming on and having conversations with people, especially those that I disagree with. And I, I think it's an important thing to do. He goes, I really love your energy. <laughs> <laughs> he like could not find a compliment for any of the opinions that I had. He's just like, I really love your energy. And I was just like, mm hmm, you too, buddy. Yeah, that's like when you have nothing nice to say about someone. So you're like, they, they were unique. Yeah, you're you know, like, they had a lot of audacity. Yeah. She's a really was, strong character. <laughs> she held to her opinions that I thought were stupid and disagreed with. Exactly. Uh, let's keep watching. Sure. Youth culture can appropriate old folks. Uh, People who are not incarcerated can impersonate, uh, oh, you know, gosh. prisoners or those who are incarcerated. Uh, men appropriate women's attire for the sake of funny uh, and mocking. So absolutely anybody can do it, and everybody on Ooh. some level may have flirted with it. So let's pause. Does that apply to trans people who adopt, let's say, biological man who adopts womanhood and says, I'm a woman and is now wearing fake boobs like we saw that teacher in uh, Canada do or one who's wearing a, a wig and acting like a bimbo now and frolicking through the forest saying day 60 something of being a girl. Does that apply to them? As, as appropriation? I doubt it. I have a feeling you would have a very different argument if that came up. Uh, so 
Clearly, we're not consistent here. And think about all the different markers he just used to say that you can appropriate. He's like, you can do it with race and ethnicity and culture. You can do it with age. Young people can appropriate from old people. Old people can appropriate from young people. You can do it based on gender. Women can appropriate from men. You can do it based on ability. Disabled people can uh, can appropriate from able people and, and vice versa. Oh my gosh, if we were worried about that, about all the different ways that you can appropriate, the laundry list that he just gave us, We'd never work a day in our life. We'd never get anything done because you'd constantly be worrying about every single thing that it is that you're doing. And we're going to get into this idea of whether or not we should worry about these things, whether or not worrying is the proper term. And you'll find that a lot of this back and forth is just linguistics games. It's just like, oh, well, that's not my definition of appropriation or uh, who's to say that I think people should worry about it. I'm just talking about awareness and It's a constant just like bob and weave the argument that I just made so that I can stand here and 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 hold hold strong in these leftist dogma opinions that I have. Okay, but a lot of the time that people that I've seen are called out for this, it's not that they were making fun or mocking in some way. It was just that they had adopted uh, a fashion or a style or whatever. I would say that's a performance. So if somebody's culture and somebody's identity becomes a performance, then it's reductive. So if you're reducing, for example, say the civil rights movement to an Afro <sighs> and you wear that, or you wear dreadlock wigs, you know, that uh, Rastafarians may wear, you do that because it's edgy, because it's cool, but ultimately because it's not you. And you're getting some kind of cultural capital from that by doing it. Baby, we get capital from everything it is that we do. Uh, The clothes that I wear are a form of capital. The hairstyle that I wear is a form of capital. Who's to say that it's costuming or mocking or putting on a performance? If Kim Kardashian decides, I want to go to wherever it is that she's going. I want to go out to Whole Foods. And when I go out to Whole Foods, I want to go in cornrows. And I want the paparazzi to photograph me. And that's what I want to do for the day. Does that mean it's a performance just because she chose to wear that hairstyle for that specific period of time? No. When I go and switch my hair to braids and I wear that for a couple of months, is that a performance? Oh, no. Well, it's not a performance when you do it because you're biracial and because I set this specific boundary and then I'm using on to be to speak on behalf of an entire culture. You see, there's so many plot holes in this ideology and in what you expect of other people that it is impossible to keep up. And essentially, the people who believe in cultural appropriation are saying black people stay in your box, Hispanic people stay in your box, white people stay in your box, especially white people stay in your box. And if you think about stepping out of it, don't do it. We don't want you. We don't need you. We don't want you to profit off of our culture, which is such a ridiculous thing to say anyways, because who's to say what you gain profit off of and whether or not that's due to the culture itself and that being adopted in your life? It's just impossible to police, truly impossible. And real quick, is he... Mm -hmm. Uh, Is he performing the role of what's an acceptable Western or European or American attire for a professor by wearing a suit and tie? Yeah. Like I saw a lot of people comment that. Like, is he or is he like internalizing the white supremacy that he decries by conforming to the dress standards of what? Why isn't he in traditional African garb if that's or hood attire if he thinks that that's what his culture is? I don't know. But it's just the whole point is we can't live functionally in a world and be productive when you're always worried about figuring out whether what you're doing is offensive or exploitative or where it falls on the intersection Olympics scale. Uh, it, It doesn't allow you to be free to think about how you can actually contribute to society instead of worrying about policing everyone's attire and behavior and, and, and what they're doing and how they're talking and all this stuff. It's like, worry about yourself Mm -hmm. and do something productive with your life instead of being a critical theorist and being critical. Right. critical of, of everything and everyone and, and saying how the lens through which you're living and viewing the world is inherently oppressive and all that. No one cares. And Nobody I, cares. And I think as this guy <laughs> talked, like you said, and they cut out a lot of his rants, mm-hmm. that that it was just like everyone's eyes just roll back into their head because he sounds very like calm and too, you know, he sounds intelligent, but it just, everyone knows deep down that this is not, it doesn't work. It's you not cannot live like this. Yeah. Yeah. You really can't. And it's, yeah. Some might say that you're putting on a performance with what you're wearing on, on the show. And it's just, uh, it just simply does not 
work. And, you know, they make the concession on the show. You know, Dr. Phil asks them, well, is it only white people who can do it? And they go, no, mm. everybody can do it. Black people can do it, of course. They spend the entire episode talking about instances where this happens against black and Hispanic people. They never talk about it in the opposite direction because they don't actually believe that. It's a concession that they found necessary to make because their argument falls apart if they don't make that concession, but they don't actually believe it. They don't believe that black people can appropriate from white people. They don't uh, uh, agree because their worldview does not work for that sort of uh, agreement. Because in their worldview, black people are oppressed, therefore they can do whatever it is they want. Their mouths might say something different, but their actions will will speak the exact opposite. And if you go and look up, there's a, there's a girl in this show, her name is Brittany. I've done a TikTok responding to her videos that she puts on the internet about cultural appropriation and it's always oh white women are wearing braids white people are doing this white people are taking on black culture and profiting off of it it's always in one direction never the opposite way and and who's hurt by that well it's not a matter of who's hurt by it it's who's being disrespected by it <laughs> oh well, who's being disrespected by it? a whole culture of people whose identities are wrapped in whatever you're dressing into and can then take off what's the difference between hurt and disrespect why was that a linguistic disti distinction you felt the need to make? It's just because they don't ever want to play the argument on your terms, ever. Amala, you don't agree. I don't. Amala. No. You think worrying about appropriation is a waste of time? I, I think not only is it somewhat a waste of time, but it's nearly impossible. You just mentioned there are nearly hundreds of ways that one could appropriate somebody else's culture or their, their livelihood. And to expect any one human being to keep on top of that throughout their entire life, I think, is an unrealistic ask. And I think imitation is a form of flattery. I appreciate my food by eating it. I appreciate the hair that I wear by wearing it, by putting on the clothes that I, that I wear. And every single item around us in this room could probably be attributed to a certain culture. Do we have to constantly worry about what culture we, we gain I things I hate from? hearing myself. Does ew, intention ew, have anything ew, ew. to do with well, it? I guess I didn't hear anything about You're anybody worrying it. about it. What I, heard, what, I, what I hear about when I think about and talk about cultural appropriation is people becoming more aware, but we could say the same thing. About Again, he says, I'm not, I'm not telling people to worry about it. I'm just telling people to be aware of it. What is the difference? Explain to me what the difference is. Because if I'm going to be aware of something, that means I have to have an, you know, an ounce of worry about it day in and day out in my life. When I wake up in the morning, I have to worry about whether or not I'm culturally appropriating something when I'm getting dressed. I have to worry about whether or not the food that I make in a TikTok video is stolen from another, con uh, another culture. Oh, I'm not saying to be worried about it. I'm just saying you need to be aware of it. Again, they'll never play the argument on your terms. About racism, sexism, homophobia. Just because you can't solve it and don't see it at every corner doesn't mean we shouldn't be aware of it and trying to address wow, it. Do you so really it, put those on the same level? I absolutely Racism do. and sexism, absolutely. you put it on the same Base level? Dr. Phil. Base Dr. Phil. That's exactly So if somebody wears their hair like you're wearing it, you put that on the same level as, as racism? Absolutely. I put that on the same wow. level as white supremacy because white supremacy <laughs> is intersectional. Oh, there it is again. There it is. Shot. Audrey Lord. It's, it's white, and, uh. and here's what I'm saying. That's why I started by saying this is about humanity or the lack of humanity. When we're putting on someone else's culture, that is somebody else's identity. <laughs> so when you're talking about being oh, worried about stuff, gosh. I'm talking about this in the context of power and history. Oh, it's always you're in the context. Right? And here's, here's, it, it, okay, pause. Here's where they completely just restructure what they said prior, that it is a two-way street. You know, white people can do it, black people can do it. He said it's about power and history. If it's about power and history, then you're not making that concession. You are saying that white people are the ones who do it because in your worldview, white people are the ones that have power and privilege and black people don't. So they have something to take back. They have something to usurp. They have something that they need to adopt in order to gain that power back. Therefore, your rules do not apply to them. And I'm so sick and tired of the culture that's like, we hate white people and white people need to pay for it. Also, if you're black, go do whatever you want. We don't care. You've been oppressed for so long. We don't expect anything of you, in fact, because of how oppressed you are. It's BS. And we're going to talk about a story after Dr. Phil of like Kanye and Ca Candace wearing White Lives Matter shirts because that's trending on Twitter, on Twitter right now and all over the Internet. And we're going to talk about why something like that occurs, why somebody would feel the need to wear a T-shirt like that. And it's because of rhetoric like this. You think white people are these all powerful, all seeing like victors of history in the universe and that because of that, black people and people of color can do whatever they want. And it's just not true. Not true.
think black people appropriate? I think it's possible for black people to appropriate a uh, different culture just because black culture is the only culture that exists and every culture has their own boundaries or things that they find offensive and things they want Except other they don't. cultures to respect. <laughs> How many of y'all agree with, with the doctor here that cultural appropriation is on the same level as racism or sexism? How many of you agree that it's serious? There's a whole like whole th three or four people, <laughs> uh, <laughs> which was I, the saving grace. Yeah, I wish I still had the crickets uh, sound effect here. I would, <laughs> <laughs> I would love to play that right now. <laughs> that would work perfectly. Yeah, uh, which was really cool about what was really cool about this is that by the end of the episode, the audience was just like, "Yeah, no, I'm not doing. I'm not dealing with this stuff. No, I really and, don't." And if you go, but if you go by like body language and how like self confident the person sounded, sure, you, you'd, you'd think maybe he won. Yeah. But if you go by like every time people you actually ask people, "Do you agree with this guy?" They were like, "Nah, nope." How many of you say, no, I, I, I think that's overblown? See, look at all those hands and a lot of, look, a very diverse audience as well. Now, I'm seeing some Asian people. I'm seeing black people. They're raising their hands and going, no, I don't agree with this. So if you think that's overblown, is it they just don't get it? Well, um, uh, when we talk about systemic racism, which many of us started talking about after George Floyd's murder, we started seeing the ways in which white supremacy is embedded in everything. Oh, mm. in everything. <laughs> everything. <laughs> Critical race theory 101. White supremacy and racism is embedded in everything, in every facet of society, in every every inch of your existence and your livelihood. Racism is to be found. Is about that. It's not only about that, but it is about that. People don't walk into a space and are just raced. You are race and. You're not just raced. So there's race and gender, there's race and religion, <sighs> there's race and sexuality, there's race That's and intersectional, body drink again, so all of that ladies and gentlemen. All that when we talk about systemic racism. And that's what's missing from comedy. That's Dr. Phil's wife, by the way. What I thought was the cutest thing ever. <laughs> it's like, here's a little behind the scenes moment. When Before you start the episode, they're gonna like talk to the audience and be like, hey guys, it's an open discussion. We want you guys to all participate. Here's the topic of discussion for today, blah, blah, blah. And then over the intercom, they start playing music. And this guy goes, and now for the heart and soul of Dr. Phil. And you expect Dr. Phil to like walk out with his little mustache and everything. His wife like walks out out to the center and like does a little twirl. <laughs> it's it's very endearing. It Everyone's very, like, yeah, Dr. Phil's wife. I've never yeah. seen her before, but great. It's very endearing. I told my my boyfriend that, and my boyfriend was like, "What did Dr. Phil do?" <laughs> that now he has to like cheer on his wife. I'm like, maybe it's just a cute thing, and he just does it because he loves his wife that much. Yeah. I'm gonna yeah, I'm I gonna say so. it's give him the, the benefit sweet, of the doubt. I'm gonna give him the benefit of the doubt and say he just loves his wife that much that that, that she is the heart and soul of the Dr. Phil <laughs> show. <laughs> I loved it. Conversations about cultural appropriations. We only want to focus on race, but not one person in this room is just raced. That's what I challenge. And that's why age becomes part of this. That's why gender becomes part of this. Dressing okay. up as women and thinking that's funny. That's cultural appropriation. What about some people who dress up with women as women and they don't think it's funny? What about drag queens that do comedy drag shows and dress up as women and they think that's funny? I have a feeling you don't hold the same energy for them as you hold for Kim Kardashian wearing cornrows. And it would be fine if you would just admit that, but they won't admit it. They won't admit it ever. It's unbelievable. That's mocking women and we make lots of money doing that. Okay, what do you guys think? Uh -huh. Yes, ma'am. In a multicultural society, I don't think that the boundaries between cultures are that rigid. Based. I think there's so much she was fluid. Great. And so, you know, at the end of the day, we're talking about hairstyles. We're talking about clothing. Um, there's so many bigger fish to fry. You know, we, we have this grievance culture. Everybody has a grievance about something. And, you know, I just think that it's really not that big of an issue. I'm going to stop there. We'll stop on a reasonable, rational, uh, you know, s statement from the audience. And that woman was great. She stopped us after the show and was like, hey, I agree with you guys. And that man was saying some interesting stuff. Yeah, she was really <laughs> sweet after. I was like, she, you was. Were, she sounded so smart. I love what she said. Yeah. Uh, so that was a lot of my appearance on Dr. Phil. Of course, we did a whole episode. So you guys can go and check that out. He has clips on his YouTube channel uh, at Dr. Phil. Also, I have a second episode coming out about affirmative action. And you know who's my, my little co-guest on that show is Candace Owens. So we both got to come 
come and go head to head. I like, <laughs> there we go, nice claps. I We walked on set and Taylor came with me, of course, cause he's my producer. And I, I was going to like get ready for the show and they're like, hey, Candace. I was oh, like, yeah. um, totally not Candace, but- Story of your life. <laughs> literally story yeah. of my life. And I was like, uh, thanks. And then I look at Taylor, I'm like, Candace Owens must be here for the show today. Cause who- Well, we didn't know because half the time know. people, people just call you Candace all the time. Right. So we were like, well, maybe they just think she's Candace. I know, I was like- <laughs> Or so maybe she's here. So. I, I'm like, either she's here or like, they just got me confused for no, for whatever. Yeah. Cause they, they think I'm a conservative black woman and that means Candace. <laughs> um, so, so me and Candace Owens are on a show talking about affirmative action. That'll come out soon. We'll let you guys know when that comes out. Before we move on to the hate comments that we got for being on Dr. Phil, guys, please like, subscribe, click the notification bell, and fill out the little survey I have down below in the description. Let us know how you feel about the show, what guests you want to have on, what topics we need to talk about, and give me your email to sign up for the newsletter. We get censored on platforms like this all the time, so having your email is a good way for me to directly connect to you guys. You'll be the first to know when our little clothing line launches. You'll be the first to know when we have a Discord for you, and your survey responses are very helpful in the creation of the show moving forward now. And keep dropping the super chats, by the way. I am yes. collecting them as they're coming in, so thank you for that. We'll read them at the end of the show, guys. Thank you so much. Okay, let's read some of these hate comments. This one's from Sayer, I think is her name. Watching Dr. Phil talk about cultural appropriation and I'm so close to punching my TV. Bless, bless. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I, I have a feeling a lot of people had very similar reactions to this. Nobody was expecting Dr. Phil to sort of take on a political take in his show. I know he's done it a few times in the past. We all saw Matt Walsh go on Dr. Phil and debate transgenderism. Uh, but this has been a shocking move that his show has sort of been taking. And he's getting a pulse on the cultural conversations that we're all having and wanting to introduce those to his show, which I think is a brave and amazing thing to do. It shouldn't be a brave and amazing thing to do, but it is. And it's nice that when we were there and when I was seeing Dr. Phil doing all this stuff, I'm like, oh, he's bringing on real conservatives. Mm -hmm. Like he's not bringing on these wishy-washy, I hate, you know, uh, I, 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 I sort of understand wokeness or blah, 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 all this stuff. He's bringing on real conservatives who are like, no, I don't mess with this and here's why and I'm gonna stand by it. And it's like names that we know and have worked with and are very familiar with. So it's always good to see a good faith argument of ours show up on TV, which is so rare. Yeah, absolutely. I think this is a newer thing this season that he's doing and and trying to host uh, conversations around difficult topics. But he, it, it, to his credit, it looks like they really are trying to represent both sides fairly. Mm -hmm. And so uh, that's good news for us. I feel like he's probably going to get some heat for like being a sort of sellout and like platforming conservative misinformation and, sure. and stuff because that's that's what happens whenever you just give conservatives a fair shake. Generally speaking on a lot of these issues like gender ideology or affirmative action or whatever, yep. the truth's just on our side. And then the truth gets out and then they get mad that they didn't get to frame it how they wanted to. Um, so anyway, I, I give major props to them and their major. team for, for hosting these discussions. Now let's read some more hate comments. Okay. Amanda says there will never be a time that Dr. Phil should be leading a conversation on cultural appropriation. It's so harmful and inappropriate. Yeah, someone else replied to that tweet and said it's so harmful and inappropriate that they're doing that. <laughs> it's so how crazy is it that we live in a day and age where people think conversation is harmful and like inappropriate? We all exist on just a spectrum of belief systems and ideas. And to think that we can't explore that on something like TV for fear of being what harmful and inappropriate is just ridiculous. Well, oh, sorry, go ahead. Mm -hmm. No, no, go for it. Well, and I mean, uh, the subtext of this tweet, too, is that Dr. Phil shouldn't be leading it. Mm -hmm. presumably because he's white or he's not from an oppressed racial group or, you know, pr pr oppressed people group that suffers from cultural appropriation, right. which was, just made me laugh in my head because of people dressing up like Dr. Phil appropriating him or something. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's a, the, the subtext of this tweet is, you know, again, it's that same echoes of Dr. Lester's arguments mm -hmm. of it's and it's it's intersectional. And so you don't get to host the conversation about this because you're not from the right group and you're 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 higher on the oppression hierarchy. And therefore you sit and don't speak and you let others take the lead on this right and it's like no let's have a productive conversation and get to the tr truth and get get a fair representation of two sides of an argument and let's let's hash it out that's yep. what we do that's that and it's like no oppression yeah. dynamics that's all yet, that matters yet if me or candace was hired to be the host of the show to have the conversation they'd be like this is not okay either yeah they'd, they're, they'd find some other angle. right they're a black person who doesn't have they have they have white ideas a black person with white ideas that's what we've been told mm. that's what we've been called uh next 
King Jelani says, shame on hashtag Dr. Phil and his production team for this incredible lack of range around the conversation about cultural appropriation. LOL, WTF, am I watching? Arf. Uh, I'm sorry. Where's the lack of range? We had a black professor, a, a black woman with braids talking about cultural appropriation and defending her policing of it. A Hispanic woman sitting on your side of, of being pro cultural appropriation. Me, a biracial woman, another biracial woman sitting next to me, a white woman, Dr. Phil and a crowd of people from all different race, races, ethnicities, backgrounds, whatever you want to call it, sitting around to have the discussion, too. So what is the lack of range that you're referring to? Is it the fact that maybe your side of things lost the argument? and didn't really do so favorably, and that's a lack of range in your opinion, I think that's what it is. Yeah, this reminds me of that YouTuber who did a, a hate video on PragerU. It's it's like, it's always the drive-by take or the like, you know, the um, casting aspersions on the motives or your funding and all that. It's never like, here's the substantive point that Amala made that I disagree with, and right. here's my refutation of what of her argument. None of them. It's never that. Never. It's always the drive-by, oh, it's a lack of range. What <laughs> WTF am I watching? It's like this laugh belittlement, but it's like, no, where's your argument? Right. What do you disagree with? I'll bring, have you on it. the show. Come yeah. and tell me. Okay, next. Watching Dr. Phil, of all people, try to tackle cultural appropriation is questionable. Why? Oh, oh, this is the one that's a thread. This yeah, is yeah. a thread, and we're going to pull it up. Honestly, watching Dr. Phil trying to score a gotcha against people pointing out that cultural appropriation is a problem is just cringe and white-centric AF, except mm. there was more black people than white people there, but keep going. All right, I had to switch the channel. The amount of fucking mental gymnastics the people on the show are using to justify problematic actions with fallacious? Is that is that even a fall... fall uh, whatever. Fallacious? Uh, I think that's a word. That sounds like a word. Thinking is just astounding and disgusting. It's not going to get better, and it's clearly based bullshit reasoning. We are and based. there's more. <laughs> there's more. This person cares so little about it that they wrote an entire <laughs> Twitter thread that two people saw. Oh, wow. Just wow. Phil used a video from an AO from Prayer U, a fascist apologist and, and misinformation website, to push the narrative. Yeah, that's a major red flag right there. Who's the show target audience really is? Let's see. What's even more disgusting is that Phil essentially relies on apathy and useful idiots recruited into his audience to try to push the narrative that cultural appropriation isn't a problem. Yeah, if I disagree with you, I'm an idiot. That's basically all they're saying. <laughs> I love how he lost the, the Phil, or the doctor, now he's just Phil. Put some respect in that man's name. <laughs> Put some respect. Put the doctor back. Yeah. We do it for Jill Biden. <laughs> yeah. You do it for Dr. Phil. When someone of mainly colonizer background takes something from someone else's cultural disrespect, Someone else's culture disrespectfully, you better believe that they're gonna get shit for it. F Dr. Phil, what a little what little disrespect I had what little respect I had for him just left after he had the audacity to bring Prager you into this. I know I said I was gonna switch the channel. <laughs> but I had something and unfortunately that bit showed and I was like, is he serious? Oh, wow. But this person doesn't care at all. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Like ten tweets in, doesn't care, is not can't be bothered but can go on this rant, again, without going against a single one of the points that we made during the episode. Right. It's it's like, I, I welcome criticism that yeah. is like, you know, make an argument, though. Don't just have these drive-by, you know, trying to dunk on you on Twitter because you don't think anyone's going to look at them. Here we are. We're looking at them. Bring we an are. argument. We are. Please do. Uh, what else do we got? Let's keep Let's keep looking here. Okay. Dr. Phil in this cultural appropriation can go cultural appropriation episode can go to hell. Reply. Yes, I immediately came on here to see if anyone was commenting. He doesn't know shit. White men have zero conception of what people deal with on a daily basis. Yes, it is racism. Reply. Don't wear a wig, braid your hair, or a lip gloss as it's my culture and you don't deserve it. I think he might have been being facetious there. I'm hoping that John C. was being facetious in there. Um, but the idea that because you are white, you don't know an argument or you don't have two eyes to see what's happening in, in your society and in your world is BS. Like you do not have to be a certain skin color or from a certain background to talk about issues that mainly regard somebody of a certain skin color or a certain background. You don't have to be a black person to talk about police brutality. You don't have to be black or Native American or Hispanic to talk about cultural appropriation. You don't have to be a woman to talk about women's issues. You can be from any background, have two eyes, that work and, and are capable of reading or taking in information around you. Honestly, no, I don't, you don't even need two eyes. You can be blind. 
as long as you're capable of taking in information and using critical thinking skills, you can have an opinion on any given issue. And I'm so tired of hearing, well, you're not from X group, so don't talk about our issues. Talk about whatever you want. My gosh. Yeah, your your <laughs> opinion is valid because you're a human, a thinking, logical, or not, not even logical, whatever. Your opinion is valid because you're a human being yes. and not because you have some... Uh, racial group that you come through or whatever there's no you're, you're not any more or less valid um, based on your skin color that's just part of being human now are you going to have a, a different perspective on things that deal with like am i going to have different perspective on things that have to do with nor being a norwegian american you know, right. just in norway or, or a man of course you know maybe but that doesn't make amala's observations about uh what that might be or what being a man is any less interesting or valid so no, it's just a all. silly way of, of looking at the world and honestly it's 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 got uh a, you don't believe in equality if you think that that way because if we're all yeah. equal then uh then everyone's opinion should be equally valid. I love that her username is Church Girl, and she's telling Doctor Phil to go to hell. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even catch. When Doctor Phil passes away, she will be up there at the pearly gates, waiting for to just send him straight to hell. Apparently, <laughs> next one. Why did Doctor Phil just show a clip from Prager U? Here we go. I tried to structure these as like their first was just like the general take on the episode and mm -hmm. then it's that people get mad about us, uh, us dr phil platforming prager you so honestly is... the whole episode was like an ad for prager you he was great. like here's amala from prager you here's taylor and taylor's like i work with amala at prager you and then they're like let's play this video from prager you <laughs> also here's will witt he used to work at prager you uh so it was a really big ad for prager you so yeah, i'm sure guess, people were shocked yeah if you haven't seen it yet then you didn't know until just now but yeah they put will witt on here too and they played a clip of him dressing yeah up as a Native American uh, mm -hmm. and, and some other of the triggering things that he did. And then he came on uh, via Skype. And uh, so anyways, it's definitely worth watching. But yeah, it was very, uh, I mean, they represented PragerU. So. We, we were repping, baby, on Dr. Uh -huh. Phil. Next. Okay. Oh, cool. Dr. Phil invited the troubled kids from PragerU <laughs> onto his show. Nice to see them getting some much needed help. Send ha us to the ha, ranch. Benny. That was very, very funny, but I'm... That's actually where Amal has been this past week, is she got sent to the ranch. <laughs> she just made up the COVID story as a as a cover. <laughs> Dr. Phil said I needed to unlearn and relearn, and mm. he sent me to the ranch. Next. It was a horrifying discussion, and prayer you on to tell us what's not racist is ridiculous. Why is it ridiculous? Again, they just make like statements and never substantiate them. Not a single time. Next. Dr. Phil gaslighting BIPOC, the community. Take a and, shot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, BIPOC, boom. Uh, and calling it entertainment while profiting and from it is the embodiment of the shit world we live in. <laughs> Again, with the like, you know, exploitation language, like he's profiting off of this conversation right. by hosting, by, by fairly representing two sides of an argument as best he can. By the way, he like reached out to the one of the the ladies that we reacted to uh, about cultural appropriation. Yes, well, and she wouldn't come on. That is so funny. I don't Speaking know if we're of allowed to, to say that. that. Oh, sorry. Uh, no, but it's anyways. fine. <laughs> I don't know if we're allowed to say that, but we did a whole episode about the Karen of cultural appropriation on TikTok, and her name is Sujia. Well, Sujia One on TikTok is her username. It's like this Asian lady whose whole career on TikTok, a million plus followers, is crying about other people using recipes. And Dr. Phil Show invited her on and was like, "Hey, we're gonna have this girl who did like a whole video about." your stuff and like responded to your arguments and and uh you know did this whole episode about you you want to come on the show and give your opinion and she like i guess at first wanted to do it and then was like no i'm not going to come on the show yeah so it's pretty disingenuous to be like oh dr phil's profiting off this conversation and trying to gaslight the bipoc he's he just hey this is a topic right. that's relevant to the culture let's reach out to everyone who's been out there talked about it and uh let's let's let it happen that's yeah. that's what we, what we witnessed and so yes. it's not like yeah, he has a show that's profitable and gets people's attention, but he, uh, he was hosting a conversation in good faith. I don't know what you're mad about. Don't know what you're mad about. And that girl, Suji, is still making TikTok videos about cultural appropriation to this day, but won't come face to face to, to substantiate the things that she says. It's just like the perfect example of this stuff happening in real life. And which, by the way, she's welcome on our show as well if she wants to come on and talk about it, debate. Yep. Anytime. Any time okay hashtag dr phil there he goes on his hashtag white supremacy rant and cancel culture talk hashtag republican mouthpiece dr phil totally missed the entire point but jumps to defend the poor little white girls only reason doctor there only real doctor there was dr lester no 
because he's a doctorate in English. Come on. <laughs> My gosh. I'm not. That's the hill I will die on. The person on. I agree with is the real doctor. Yeah, the person I agree with is the real doctor. I don't know if Dr. Phil is a real doctor either, but certainly Dr. Lester is not a doctor. I don't care. Everyone's a doctor these days. You never know. And it's so funny because she says uh, Dr. Phil totally missed the point and jumps to defend the poor little white girls. There was two. Me, me and that girl were biracial. One white girl next to me. So what are you talking about? Defend the poor little white girls. He was defending other BIPOC people, according to your own metrics. It's just people quite literally have blinders on and they can't see things that are are at all dissident to the things that they believe. They just block it out of their memory. Next one. Cancel Dr. Phil colonizer mentality. Oh, my God. I was quoting that other guy. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't watch Dr. Phil when I don't think the guests are are idiot grifters so why would i watch when i know that they are <laughs> it's just like one. it's again it's like how do you what, what are you gonna say if i'm an idiot grifter to you then yeah i guess i'm an idiot grifter what a what a weird thing to grift on when i could be doing the same thing uh, you know screaming and crying about my own oppression and getting paid for it this was in response to a prager you tweet by the way so presumably this guy is following prager you just because he likes to see what idiot grifters are up to they apparently. always are man we're living rent free baby i should start charging Oh. I'd be a billionaire. Mm-hmm. Maybe we could get a cable that could work on the show uh, so that our screen doesn't go out every time. Exactly. If, if we charge rent for all the people whose heads we live in rent free. Ooh, how many more do we have of these? Let's continue. <laughs> okay. Who is this coon on there Dr. It Phil? That's me, baby. Hot Uncle Ruckus. <laughs> <laughs> Hot Uncle Ruckus on Dr. Phil. Honestly, if I ever get this tattoo covered, what if I did like a hot pin-up version of Uncle Ruckus. I would love it. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> Just really, aggressive. really give in to the grift there, ladies and gentlemen. But third and James at Lady Beast B, I'm the coon from Dr. Phil. <laughs> Hit me up. Alma, do you feel threatened by this? Is this like, do you feel like, is this uh, triggering to your emotional health and <laughs> I feel wellness? Like, um, I feel like it's an attack on my life and that um, she shouldn't be allowed on the internet anymore. No, <laughs> I'm fine. Anyways, little lady T says, hashtag Dr. Phil, what the hell is this? The light skinned African girl with the big bushy ponytail needs to shut up. Okay, first of all, <laughs> why'd you have to come from my big bushy ponytail? I don't really understand what is the problem is. Is she making fun of your hair, Amala? Is she literally making fun of my hair? I feel like it's On an culturally... episode about cultural appropriation. It's <laughs> <Yeah, that's laughs> irony. Culturally insensitive, you <laughs> racist. <laughs> Anyways, anyway, she's a racist. Let's continue. She obviously never experienced hearing or made uncomfortable in a racial situation. Um, I literally just got called a coon two seconds ago. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I get called a coon, an Uncle Tom, a hot Uncle Ruckus, although I find that endearing um, every day. So I get constantly racially motivated comments and what would be uncomfortable situations if I was a little bitch. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not. Drop that um, mic on him. Anyways. The, this, the sentence structure is killing me here. The, it really is. She obviously never experienced hearing, never experienced hearing or made uncomfortable in a racial situation. It's like, I just like, I just automatically anticipate grammatical errors when yeah, I read these now. True. So now I read them incorrectly. Uh, but I no, feel that victimized was... by being subjected to this grammar. <laughs> <clears throat> Next. Okay. Deep Toots. Love that name. This coon on Dr. Phil right now. I wasn't even running on with her. What you mean cultural appropriation doesn't exist? Boo her off the stage. Except I didn't get booed. Everybody agreed with me for the most part, except for a handful of people. Uh, like from you sitting on the side with majority crackers, you mean me, the other biracial girl, and the white girl. Again, I must say. And I mean white as fuck, blue eyed, blonde hair, fully Aryan race mutants. You should know you wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly. I think he's talking about me. Uh, yeah, I think it might be about you. You're an Aryan race mutant, Taylor. How do you feel? In the estimation of this guy. You've just been racially attacked. Mutant. I know. I'm Well, yeah, but it only works in one direction. So You should go riot in the street. I deserve this comment. I think you Ama. need to go set a Norwegian business on fire. <laughs> 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 oh, my gosh. <sighs> if we 
were really wanted to emulate Black Lives Matter, Taylor and I would go set a Norwegian business on fire, but we will not do that because, you know, we, we are sane individuals. Honestly, I invite more people like this to leave hate comments on the internet because it's just like self-exposing. You're just exposing your own idiocy and, and how racism. ridiculous, your own racism. I'm now a victim of racialized hate on the internet. Say his name. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so Oh, we're getting out of pocket today. We are getting out of pocket today. Okay, continue. Thorn says, Dr. Phil, don't platform literal Prager U employees to discuss racism challenge. Uh, Could we maybe figurative Prager U employees? I I don't I don't know what what you want me to say. Like, uh, people have this idea that like Prager U is like the worst place on earth. Even though, hey, we are listed on the best places to work in Los Angeles. Oh yeah, you guys know that. That's my other recent TV appearance on Fox LA. Yeah. Talking about Talk about Prager how great U. it is to work here. Anyways, guys, um, we have several videos about racism here at PragerU. And it's like everybody expects because we are conservative leaning that it just means we're racist. And I think so many people just use that as an argument when they're talking about PragerU rather than actually talking about anything we've ever said, pointing out a specific video. Um, so... I mean, keep doing what you're going to do, but more people are going to see our videos because what it really does is it creates this sort of feedback loop of we make a video, you guys call it racist, and because you've called it racist, people go and watch it, and then they're like, oh, I don't see anything racist here. What are you talking about? And now I'm I'm now on the alt-right pipeline headed towards my my new neo-Nazi home mm-hmm. because I watched a PragerU video. Amala's the train conductor on the alt-right express. <laughs> Okay, next. Uh, hashtag Dr. Phil, le- wait, leave to Dr. Phil to. This is oh. another grammar mess up. Okay, leave it to Dr. Phil to, help to you out here. invite a hashtag young white supremacists on <laughs> speaking for hashtag Navajo Nation. I don't think so. Yeah, I don't know. This lady was on a tear, by the way. She was like her whole feed. I tried to go back and grab some more of these, but she's banned from from Twitter. She got banned. <laughs> so she probably overstepped the bounds of the uh, the Twitter rules well, a guess, little bit in some of this they hate. Can say, but they can say leftists are getting censored just as I much as we so. are. This I'm lady. just glad to know we live in a world of equal standards yeah. for, for all. Bye, Anna Marie 309. And, uh, this might be the last one, but yeah, it was pretty is great it? that she's okay, called, that called, is the last called one. Willow white supremacists. Yep. If I ever met one, absolutely. <laughs> if you met one, you met two, you met them all. White, yep. Will is a white supremacist. Yeah, white supremacist, and it takes one to know one. We're all there together, guys. Though the 1.1 thousand of you watching on YouTube right now, and however many on Facebook and Twitter and Getter, welcome to the White Supremacy Club. Uh, we have drinking games. We have snacks, at least here in the LA office, if you come and visit us. <laughs> and we got memes. So, yeah. memes. What snacks would a white supremacy club eat? <clears throat> Crackers. White cheddar uh, smart popcorn. <laughs> um, <laughs> white cheddar. <laughs> what else do you guys have? <clears throat> any, any white chocolate. Th- white chocolate. There we go. Anything white, baby. Any any Milk. Aryan Aryan sn- drop your oh favorite Aryan snack down below. <laughs> 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 Uh, we're having a fun time on today's show. Next, guys, let's talk about this Kanye West situation. He's trending on Twitter. He's t- trending on Instagram. He's trending on every platform that ever existed because he wore this little hoodie. Let's take a pic. Let's look at the picture. White Lives Matter. I don't know where. Okay, he wore it at the Yeezy Season Nine presentation in Paris. He was, in fact, not alone. Here's our girl Candy O, also wearing her White Lives Matter sweatshirt in the white edition. In case you didn't want the black one, <laughs> um, uh, and everybody's going insane because of it. Here's a hate comment from Jamil Hill. So many folks are trying to excuse Kanye wearing a White Lives Matter T-shirt as just a troll move or marketing. Maybe it is, but it's a danger. Dumb message to send for someone with his massive platform. I've been off, dude, but y'all go ahead labeling his foolishness as genius. 15,000 likes on this. Let's talk about what might possess somebody to wear a White Lives Matter t-shirt. I saw it and I was like, okay, Kanye wearing a White Lives Matter t-shirt. Am I surprised by this? No. Do I think there's something particularly valid about doing something like this? No, but I totally get it. Uh, Where you create a culture, you will create a counterculture. And if the culture now is Black Lives Matter and F white people and they're stupid and, and they have power and privilege, guess what you create? 
a, a White Lives Matter t-shirt that, that Kanye West wears because he's a particularly, you know, salacious, sensational person. We've known that. He's been that way since he, he started his career and started in this business. And, and so is Candace. And that's not to knock them at all. I don't really see a massive problem with this. It's going to spark a conversation and it's probably a conversation that needs to be had. Whether or not this is the light that it needs to be had in, arguing and haggling over sweatshirts, no. But where you create a Black Lives Matter, you're going to create a White Lives Matter. And Jameel Hill says in this tweet, it's a dangerously dumb message. What's dangerously dumb about saying white people's lives matter? I como se dice, don't understand. You want to substantiate that? You want to explain what matter, what is dangerously dumb about saying something like that? And if it's dangerously dumb to say that about white people, why is it not the same to say it about black people? Why is it that we could hear people say black lives matter, put it on their car, put it outside their business, wearing it on t-shirts, tattooing it on their forehead for the past, I don't know, five years now. And that's not dangerously dumb. That's not a crazy message to hear. That's not something that is harmful that we need to take off the internet. But saying it in reverse for white people is, please explain. I would love to see another tweet of, of you explaining that worldview. And they probably won't because it doesn't hold up. It's always a one-way street. Like I said before on the show, black people can do whatever they want and white people have to sit and take it. But... When the wrong black people do it, like Candace Owens and Kanye, suddenly we have a problem. And as much as I'm not gonna go around wearing a White Lives Matter t-shirt, I totally understand why they do it. And it, it points out what is a, a discussion, as I said before, that needs to be had. What's so wrong with two black people wearing these White Lives Matter t-shirts? What are you gonna tell them? You're gonna tell them they're filled with white pride and white supremacy to fully black people wearing these sweatshirts to an event of their own, to something that he's established himself, a business that he's created himself, a black owned business. Are you gonna tell him what he's wearing is problematic and that he shouldn't be able to wear it? You can try, but you'll have no argument to stand on because of his skin color. And that's the environment that you created. That's the culture that you created safeguarding black people from any form of criticism and to see two black people flip it on its head and use it against you i think is beautiful <laughs> i'm gonna give Thank you another you. elevation there <laughs> yeah i mean i kept thinking of points to say as you're talking and then you kept saying it so like how the different rules apply and how they right. flipped it on its head so yeah i mean th this is just another case of uh exposing their logic i i when you asked me like as a white person how do i feel about this mm -hmm. my mind immediately went to like um the same situation we covered a couple weeks ago with ronda santis sending um illegal immigrants to dc to kind of flip their logic on its head and they support these policies that are creating the open borders and so hey look, we're going to send you to deal with, with with those consequences and uh we uh, we talked about whether that was something acceptable because it is the is it the most tasteful maneuver to do ever right no. probably not but is it effective in exposing the the lunacy of their logic yes and i so the more i think about this the more i'm like it's kind of based that uh kanye put this shirt on because yeah uh you know he's kind of in that category now of he's he's been so outspoken and done so much that it's like he's uncancelable because he just lives in being canceled world yeah and and that's something to be said for being unapologetic check the sign <laughs> the show uh that you know when you when you are uh, you're you're on a self. You don't have to worry about playing to anyone's uh, expectations of how you should speak or behave or what you should wear. Yeah. And so, uh, and if you want to make a point, you, he made it. And uh, I I actually think it's it's ingenious because this whole edifice that the narrative is built on that different rules should apply to different people is racist. Yep. And so for for Kanye to just take a torpedo and shoot it right at that, I'm like all for it, baby. Yep. Do it. Do it all over again. And here's another tweet in response to this: Kanye West making black models wear quote, white lives matter, end quote, shirts is a culmination of his anti-blackness and his immersion in white supremacy ideologies and methods. Disgusting. Who's to say that this woman or whoever this model is, is being forced to wear that? What a, what an asinine uh, just assumption for you to make. Why are you making the association of black people being made to wear something? You don't think they have a mind of their own? You don't think they get to decide what shirts they put on and what they model and, and how they walk and what they wear? You don't think this model decided whether or not to take this job, decided whether or not they support the ideologies of Kanye West and what he wanted to wear? Or do you think black models are incapable of making a decision like that? I love things like this when they happen because they flip the narrative on these people's heads and they're forced to stand by some of the statements that they've made if you think white lives matter is unacceptable then tell me why black lives matter is
Tell me why we're able to have an entire organization with that name. Tell me why we went through months and months of riots in 2020 of people screaming Black Lives Matter while setting black businesses on fire, killing black individuals, not doing a single damn thing for the black community, not helping us at all, but running with the name Black Lives Matter. Tell me why that's okay. And if it's not okay when white people do it, it sure as hell is not okay when black people do it. So come on now. Uh, I'm starting to love this more and more. I was a little iffy on it when I saw it for the first time, and now I'm seeing some of the some of the responses, and I'm like, you know what? Mmm, we're exposing something here. No, Kanye, don't wear the White Lives Matter shirt as a fashion statement, Kanye. Waking up as a Kanye fan in 2020 and opening up Twitter, having to drink because he's wearing these shirts. Let's be honest. If you made it to 2022 as a Kanye fan, then you stuck around through some, through you, some stuff. Yeah. <laughs> you saw some stuff. <laughs> yeah. So if this is the straw that broke the camel's back, wow. You know. Yeah. Apparently Jaden Smith was there. He said he tweeted out Black Lives Matter. I had to dip. LOL. And that's fine. Guess what? Because things are going to split and you're going to find people who don't support your message and you'll find people who do. And Kanye has this and he's standing by it. And you know what? All the better that he invited Candace Owens to do the same. Somebody tweeted out Kanye might finally force the media to say that all lives matter. Mm. I, this is N Wokeness account on Twitter. I just started following him. He, he does some cool stuff. I mean, if yeah. it's a guy, it might be a girl. Yeah. So, you know. Might be a girl. Them. We don't want to misgender. They, them. <laughs> <laughs> we do not misgender on this podcast. <laughs> but yeah, he, Kanye actually might force somebody to say all lives matter. Because what are you going to say in response to this? No, white lives don't matter. Just the black lives do. Turn it, take it back. Take off the white part and put black on it and forget all the other people. Forget the Asians and the Hispanics and the white people. It's black lives matter. That's always what it's going to be. Hmm. It's mm. it's it's exposing the logic that we live in, which is different rules for different categories of people yep. based on skin color. It's the opposite of, and we we go over this over and over again. But it's this is the this ideology has become so dominant in our society that it's it's how young people are being trained and indoctrinated to think that uh, you should look at the world through the lens of oppression, just like we saw uh, with Dr. Lester on the Dr. Phil episode. It was all, hey, you don't understand why you should be offended by this. You don't understand why there's oppression dynamics that work in this and it's all about this like marxist fundamentally marxist worldview where it's all about uh, the oppression olympics and yep. we before that we had equality we had and you know no did we always live up to those values of course not but nope. we, it was it was a it, it was a system through which the most successful civilization flourished and the most successful country ever ever in world history flourished and was built and we should go back to trying to live up to those ideals rather than uh, adopting a new worldview that all it can do is criticize and take down this racist system and interpret everything and if you're not thinking the way that we think then you're not sufficiently enlightened yeah. and you're just uh this you're still holding up the old power system and it's all about power systems and oppression dynamics it's like no like screw that screw <laughs> put it. on the white lives matter shirt let's torpedo yep. this thing yep if it takes wearing a white lives matter t-shirt to bring this conversation to the forefront then by all means do it and those are our thoughts on Kanye and Candace wearing White Lives Matter sweatshirts. Moving on. Let's talk about our last bit of news here. And this is about the Bros rom-com movie that just came out. Here's the poster for it in case you guys wanted to know. Uh, if you're wondering why those two hands look awfully masculine, it's because this is a gay rom-com put out by a one Billy Eichner. Uh, and I'm sure you guys have seen the previews for it. They've been all over YouTube. Billboards here in Los Angeles for this movie Bros and whatever. It's a gay rom-com. I don't have any problem with that. You want to make a movie about two men falling in love and it's a funny little rom-com setting for, for people who want to watch that? By all means, make your movie. But apparently it didn't quite have the splash at the box office that was expected by the creator, Billy Eichner, and he took to Twitter to talk about it. Uh, so here's the tweet from Variety. Hashtag bros movie struggled to connect with audiences, opening to about half of the 8 million to 10 million that Universal projected it would make. So you flopped by half. Okay. Billy Eichner takes to Twitter and he says, that's just the world we live in, unfortunately. Even with glowing reviews, great Rotten Tomato scores and a cinema score, etc., straight people, especially in certain parts of the country, didn't show up for bros. And that's disappointing, but it is what it is. He goes on to say, everyone who isn't a homophobic weirdo should go see bros tonight. You will have a blast. He talks about how special and unique it is and for queer folks and blah, 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 rainbow. I'm gay or maybe. Yeah, yeah, he's gay. Uh, we love it. Whatever. Uh, to have your movie flop at the box office and then blame a set of people who were not your target demographic for your movie 
is just some BS. Like, how long are people going to try to get away with this stuff? And I don't think he's going to get away with it because I don't think anybody can see that and logically go, yeah, makes a good point. It's straight people's fault. It's very similar to what happened with Viola Davis. She went out and said, if you guys don't go see Woman King, my utterly fabricated retelling of history of this, this slave people in Africa, if you don't go and see it, you're telling the world that black women can't lead in the box office. Since when is accusing people of racism and homophobia a good marketing strategy for your film? I don't think straight people read Billy's tweet and went, you know what? Oh, you know what? I didn't want to watch a gay rom-com. And you know what, Susan? We're going to go tonight. We're, we're bringing the kids too. <laughs> My straight guilt kicks in and I'm like, oh, I, this is a more marginalized group historically. Right. So I need to support them and do my duty and go watch a movie I don't want to watch right. because that'll make me a good person. Kids! Don't cover your eyes for the gay sex scene. I want you to watch it in its entirety. I want you to feel it. They love each other too. I feel like there's probably some tick, uh, some woke TikTok parents that lives of TikTok hasn't seen yet that has made that video already. Oh, a hundred percent. It's hundred yeah. percent legit. Like, dude, you cannot blame straight people for not wanting to go see your gay rom com. I'm so sorry, and I'm sure a lot of straight people did just for like the activism points that you get for watching something like that. But really, put yourself in the headspace of somebody that goes to watch rom coms. I love a good rom com. If if it's if it's been done, I've I've seen it probably a thousand times. And why do women in particular love rom-coms? That's our peak demographic for rom-coms. It's because they go and imagine that they're being swept off their feet by this funny, charming guy who nobody's ever going to meet in a million years but exists in this movie. And women love that. So they, they go in droves to movie theaters to watch rom-coms. When you make a gay couple in a rom-com, does that really fulfill a, a female's fantasies maybe for some women that's a fantasy of theirs um but it's kind of exclusionary to the whole idea of being able to picture yourself in the rom-com itself and put yourself in that position so of course if you make a rom-com for a specific demographic of people that is not a, a particular fantasy for straight women you're probably not going to do that well in the box office as another rom-com would it's as simple as that yeah, the, the only surprising thing to me about this whole story is that they expected it to do better than this. Right. And that's not a knock on the quality of the film or anything like that, or, uh, but it's just sure, it's you, you made a film for a tiny demographic of people, a, right. um, a micro demographic. And uh, that, you know, so that um, the, uh, they're very well served and congrats, you put the big Hollywood budget behind it. And I'm sure you had lovely acting and writing and everything that sure. Hollywood has to offer uh, for this type of thing. But the, the, this just doesn't. Mo, most people cannot relate to this. Mo, mo, objectively speaking, yep. uh, most people just cannot relate to this, and so they would. And then for you to go on Twitter and cry homophobia, and then try to guilt people into watching it because they're bad people if they don't. It's like, come on. But this is the new thing work. I've noticed with uh, with Hollywood lately. Is it's it's the you know like you you made a great point bringing up Women King. My mind goes to to Rings of Power and this new uh, Amazon Lord of the Rings series. And basically, they the whole the mar, all the marketing in, for the show was just draped in woke stuff. And then um, when people came out and people and when the show came out and it got tons of negative reviews on IMDb, mm -hmm. um, they immediately came out with this big statement and saying we this is all these racist racist trolls and they don't like that there's black people cast in it and that's why and so they hide behind their the the intersectionality the racial quotas and all that stuff that they put in the in the themes um instead of having to face actual criticism of it it's like yeah. they just use the veneer of uh racism they blame race, they, these random racists on the internet and say that's why thousands and thousands and thousands of people don't like our show even right. though they're making full-length videos on youtube unpacking why it's so terrible why the writing's bad why it's amateurish um it's just and it doesn't live up to the lore it's uh it's no it's you're racist so i can dismiss you and then you have the cast come out with all these like shirts that are like oh solidarity over racism and it's like anything to play up that narrative and and talk about the politics or the intersectionality of it to avoid the fact that you just you know in this case they made a misstep in calculating how many people this would appeal to in the lord of the rings case they just didn't do a good job right uh, but Dude, it's cringe stop bringing racism and, and intersectionality into everything yeah do you think you're gonna bully people into submission like bully people into wanting to watch you know the second i get called a racist is the second i head to the movie theater yeah. i head to my nearest movie theater and i'm like 
I don't care how much it costs. You get me a ticket to go see bros. I, I got called a homophobe and I need to rectify this. No, it doesn't work. And when you go and then pay to watch the movie and the movie you just paid for is bullying your entire existence and making fun of who you are as an individual or telling, you know, you don't know something about our community or whatever. Of course, people don't want to watch that. I'm sorry. I like to watch things that not even necessarily things that support my values, but things that are not a blatant attack on who I am as a person. That would be really nice, you know? And we happen to subject ourselves to woke movies for your guys' entertainment and to let you guys know like what people are making to get a pulse on like what Hollywood is creating. But it's totally understandable that people don't wanna go and watch a movie like Don't Worry Darling, where their entire existence is being attacked, made fun of, uh, caricaturized for the sake of just Hollywood patting themselves on the back. Yeah, and makes you, sense. Yeah, we, and you can go back. We we reviewed that. What else did we do? The, nope. Uh, nope. And uh, what was the one of, from Hulu? The oh gosh, oh I'm not, I'm not okay. okay. Not, not okay. okay. Anyway, so you can go back and look at those. And if you guys have suggestions for movies or th shows that we you'd like to see us review, yep. uh, even if they're not like necessarily super woke, but just stuff you want to see Amla's opinion on, drop we'll them. talk about it. We've yeah. been we were talking about Dahmer this morning, Blonde, the new Marilyn Monroe movie, Hocus yeah. Pocus two, like whatever you guys are are actually talking about, we will we will join. She's gonna give Amla lots of homework, so she has to watch <laughs> lots of shows. It shouldn't be it's bad. Just, it's a real struggle being an influencer, guys. Oh, yeah. What a hard life I lead. Uh, anyways, guys, I think that's it for today. If you guys want to check super out. Chats. Oh, super chats. If you guys want to check out the full Dr. Phil episode, by the way, most of the clips are on his YouTube channel. I think I screenshotted all the super chats. You let me know if oh, I you missed did? any. Okay. okay. Super chat number one, Unicorn Black Belt says, how do you feel about, quote, drag is modern blackface, end quote. You know what? Is this a hot take? I'm not offended by blackface. Uh, and so many people, <gasps> even conservatives, are offended by blackface. I'm not offended by blackface. You know, like people will call out Jimmy Kimmel and be like, look, he did blackface. Or like, Justin Trudeau did blackface. Be mad about it. I'm like, I really don't care. If you are going to take on a, a, a black character and that's something you want to act as, I really don't give a shit that you put on blackface. I don't. Now, if you're putting it on and you're like, I'm an N-word. And yeah. uh, so I didn't know how to tap dance before you know that's yeah. we're, we're getting into different territory there but if it's like like julianne hoff wanted to play some sort of character for halloween i think she wanted to play like crazy eyes from from orange is the new black okay. and she wore like tan skin stuff on her i'm like maybe not the smartest decision in our current cultural climate but also i don't care and i'm not mad about it no i think at some point in the last like 10 15 20 years we've lost the ability to distinguish between uh, what you what you said, mentioned is like original definition of blackface, which right. was you dress up as a caricature with intent, with clear intent to harm, to demean, to portray black people as stupid or you know inferior in some way. Right, that's and, different. Yeah, and that we could, we used to be able to make that distinction because it's common sense that and that like Jimmy Kimmel even when he just played a or Robert Downey Jr. in Tropic Thunder when he just played a character that right. happened to be black. There's that's it's innocuous, it's neutral, and that's what we've lost. Is nothing's neutral anymore. Yeah. Anything that, you know, touches on a racialized thing, suddenly we have to read offense into it. Right. And I feel the same way about drag. I don't care. Dress in drag. Do your drag shows. Do whatever. Dance like a stripper. Hopefully not in front of kids. But do your own little drag show thing or whatever. Just don't turn around and tell me that you're a woman. That's yeah. it. That's it. You're not a woman. You're a man dressed as a woman. It's a caricature of a woman. It's a bimbification of a woman. But you are more than fine to do that. And I do not care. I will go on my merry way. So no, I don't. I don't uh, think that a drag shows tantamount to blackface. But the people who are angry about blackface should probably hold the same energy for drag shows. Just be, just if they want to be intellectually consistent. That's my thoughts. Yeah. Next uh, from C two to J. Big props to you for standing your ground and holding your own by not folding to the pressure. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. It was fun. I'll go on Dr. Phil any day of the week. So You're going anything pretty much any day of the week. I will go on anything basically any day of the week. Guys, can I tell them that I'm doing... I don't know what I signed in that contract, but guys, <laughs> I... You know, on this show, we do our Jubilee Middle Ground series where we go through and watch the little debates that people go back and forth on. And baby girl, I'm about to be on Jubilee, which I'm so excited. It'll be like the ultimate inception of me reacting to a Jubilee episode that I'm actually in. So I won't tell you guys the subject matter because I don't know if I can, but I'm going on Jubilee uh, to debate some people. So 
Let's see. Next one, Corduroy G says, if he wants to play this stupid game, then he needs to take off his suit. And that's a lot of what people were commenting and saying, like, you know, you're dressed up as a professor, the guy on Dr. Phil, and you're dressed in this suit. What culture did that come from? And have you appreciated that culture today and acknowledged it and credited it for, for the money and the exposure that you'll get from being on Dr. Phil? Probably not. Thank you, Corduroy G. C2 to J says, how can cultural appropriation exist if you can identify as whatever you want? Identify as black when you're white and want to have braids? Problem solved, right? Well, apparently transracialism doesn't exist. And I saw a video talking about this. I think it was Zuby Music talking about it. And he's like, you know, transracialism is way more believable than transgenderism because at least race is actually a social construct. At least it's something that actually exists on a spectrum. Mm -hmm. And gender slash sex, because I don't like the term gender, is not. It's binary. It's always been binary. So, I, you know, I'm more likely to believe somebody who's transracial than somebody who's transgender. But whatever. CC says, is straightening hair cultural appropriation? Good question for the people on the other side of that argument. Because that girl had blonde highlights in her braids. That's not natural mm. to black people. It's not a typical hair color for them. Are you culturally appropriating? And if so, did you acknowledge that and give credit and compensation to the white people that you stole from? Probably not. Also, just got to throw in here. I just went to Norway and learned a lot about Vikings. They braided their hair too. Yes, they did. Braided and dreaded. So the black guy, professor, stole his hairstyle from a white culture. But of course, it's not possible because it's not a two-way street. Sup, my dude, says you did a wonderful job on the show, Amala. Thank you. Good stuff. I just wonder what Dr. Phil's reaction was when you said you liked having hair on your head. <laughs> uh, he probably felt personally attacked by that comment. He's got hair on his head, technically. It's just all above the lip. Is baldness an oppressed group? Because maybe maybe uh, Dr. Phil has some intersectionality in his favor there. I honestly think people would qualify bald people as an oppressed group. Mm -hmm. I yeah. honestly think there's a group of people that would believe that. Yeah. <sighs> Anything's possible, ladies and gentlemen. If WS is intersectional, why isn't it just supremacy? Oh, okay. So we're saying if white supremacy is intersectional, meaning, you know, that uh, so many people can indulge in white supremacy, have it internalized, why isn't it just supremacy? Because, CC, everything is rooted in whiteness. And how you could possibly not know that is <laughs> ridiculous. Yeah. You need to unlearn and relearn. In their uh, theology, because it's tantamount to a religion, Whiteness is the original sin. Whiteness is the original sin. <laughs> <laughs> that is the plague on Western civilization that we that must be eradicated. And there's no forgiveness for it, by the way, in their religion. So, Taylor, it's you're going to hell and I'm sitting half and half. Half of my body is up there in heaven and the other half is in hell for my whiteness. Mm. See you guys there. Uh, Red Pill Redhead says, please make your merch available in the UK. I will try. We are looking at websites and hopefully it's going to have international shipping. I think that should be pretty easy to That's accomplish. That's going to be a deal breaker now just for you, Red Pill. It will. <laughs> just for you. <laughs> oh, you don't ship to UK? Sorry. Out of here. Unsubscribed. Mm -hmm. Taking my super chat back. Yep. Uh, no, but I will try. We are trying, um, the one of the just non-negotiables, of course, is that the, the, the stuff has to be made in the United States of America. You guys know that. So we like to support the country that we're from and the country that we currently abide in. And that is uh, the United States of America. So I'm trying to accomplish that first. Then we'll worry about getting it shipped out to all of you guys and making it cool. Next one. Celeste Delart says, you all are so amazing. I hope one day to have your confidence. Thank you for doing what you do, Celeste. Thank you so much. And I don't know that we're that confident. It's all you know fake it till you make it baby <laughs> i'm very con confident <laughs> we're we're both like nervous wrecks whenever we have to do anything yeah so don't well, be fooled usually i'm riding Amla's coattails so i'm comfortable behind her while uh, <laughs> she's taking the bride so. i'm like the big the big body guy <laughs> behind uh, the 22 year old girl i'm like yeah hell <clears> yeah <throat> jamie says what is up with will does he still work for prager you are you guys still planning to do anything with will and amala live channel please be uh please keep up the great work amala and taylor guess what you guys are kind of on the Will and Amla live channel right now. We switched the name over because Will left PragerU. He's doing his own thing in Florida, uh, a newsletter called Florida Standard. Mm -hmm. Florida Standard. Um, and you guys can check it out. I think it's like like FloridaStandard.com or something or .org. Yeah, or, I think so. 
uh, so you guys can check out the work that he's doing. I think it's just like a Florida based newsletter uh, and he's out doing his thing over there. So uh, you guys can go send him some love. He's and still let connected know. with PragerU and we, I he think there still be will be videos mm-hmm. with him featured and stuff. So stay tuned. Definitely still follow him yeah. and stuff. But yeah, that's that's where he's at. We've been like re re putting out his like man on the street clips and stuff and they've just been going killing. viral all killing. over again. <laughs> I wonder how much of the Dr. Phil episode was because of that, too, or like them finding it. Because those videos got tens of millions of views on shorts. Yep. So could have been a lot, honestly. Which, by the way, how if you have been subscribed to this channel since it was Will and I'm the live show, drop let us know in the chat. I'm curious to see. Yes, and fill out the survey in yep. the description down below to let us know where you want where you want us to go with the show. Oh my gosh, I just had a mini stroke. It's, <laughs> oh my gosh. It's like, you did want- I get vaccinated recently? <laughs> <laughs> no. No, I didn't. Um, half your face isn't moving. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, okay, next. Peter, 1987. Hi, Taylor. Do you think... This is for you, Taylor. Oh. Do you think churches that celebrate Black History Month are subscribing to wokeness? Um, mm. I mean, in a in a very mild way, I would say yes. Uh, okay. Just because, you know, it. we should be in an equal world and we should not care about race. And I think leaning into all that type of stuff is just not helpful doesn't it doesn't lead us toward actual progress actual progress would look like race neutrality we don't care right. we don't care about skin color now is it okay to you know celebrate uh, a, a group of people um sure but especially in the climate we're living in it just feels like wherever that happens it's there's always a subtext of wokeness and it's tied to this broader narrative that uh is all about oppression and i don't like that i don't right. think it's helpful anywhere it, it shows up and yeah. so it's hard to do in, in today's climate and not feed into that narrative but narrative and even undeliberately so yeah it's like okay to talk about black history it just depends what narrative are you coupling it with Mm -hmm. that's really all all that matters also um whose name did i just miss main kyla i don't have your super chat i don't know if you have it taylor but i see you said your super chat is still on the list you have it okay read it yeah this is actually to to me as well oh perfect um taylor did you go to sauna or is it bad stew in norway um and i don't really know what bad stew is um mm. but no i did not go to a sauna i know that's kind of a thing in scandinavia but uh, one of the airbnbs we looked at had one built into the house which i thought was dope oh, cool. but uh yeah i mean i guess it gets cold in the winter so why not have he was have too sauna, busy but... like running around going to history museums and stuff fjords yeah, yeah i did we, 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 we rented a car and drove it was like it was it was like not a vacation it was like a trip you know yeah. where you're like going from spot to spot and let's go see this fjord and let's go this is really cool i'll, I'll drop i'll say this uh, we, i went to this place in a town called uh good or something valley of the gods um and they had a viking reenactment village there it's called viking village and uh anyway we, we checked it out you can like experience life as a viking and how they lived and learn a lot about their history and play with their weapons and i was shooting bows and throwing axes and so fun it was really awesome and badass but anyway i left and then like two days later while i'm still in norway one of the guys who works there dms me and i'm like he's like hey i'm a huge blue and Amla, or i'm a huge a fan of amala and you yeah. um and i'm and a Pr- of prager you i know in norway and he's like are you still around and and he had like a hundred thousand followers he's like a blacksmith in the viking village i was like dude that's so wild. wild. Yeah. So yeah. I didn't get to meet him, but we, we connected uh, on Instagram. So, Dude, I went shopping with my roommate on Saturday and five of you guys walked up to me. It's so crazy every wow. single time it happens. And you guys were all from like different demographics. One was like a young 20 something white girl. She's like, hey, I watch your show. And we were just like, cool. And this other white guy's like 20. He's like, pray are you. What's up? I'm like, hey, this older black man walks up to me at the mall and he's like, I really like your show and I like what you have to say. And I was like. Thank you very much. And then I went to a restaurant with a with a friend and two guys like this Hispanic guy who works at the restaurant was like, hey, I watch your show. <laughs> and then this other white guy was like, yo, I watch your show. So weird. Love meeting you guys in person. If you ever see me out and about, which you probably will, I'm always out and about somewhere and I'll be doing a lot of traveling at the end of the year. Come and say hi. Always come and say hi. But don't don't uh, come up aggressively from behind her and grab her shoulder, which happened at an airport once. That did. And we almost 
spot somebody. Yeah, you know, I've never had really a bad experience meeting somebody except that one was very, I was shooketh. Uh, the scream that I scrumped when I got, we were like walking in the airport. Were you behind me in front of me? I don't know. I was like next to you, yeah. But this guy like runs up and he like grabs me and turns me around. He's like, I love your show and I love your content, which is so nice. Like, don't get me wrong right. at all. But it was very like, am I about to get stabbed or am I about to get told that? <laughs> yeah, like, no, I heard footsteps and then I just saw you like, turned a wheel around and looking horrified and then I, it was like so jarring that it took a second to be like oh this is like a nice person you're like oh you're fan. nice you are not but gonna they were very aggressively me. nice yeah <laughs> exactly. so uh okay last one from rory uh just started watching the episode they needed to have ari shafir's show the amazing racist playing just to make those idiots heads explode i don't think i've ever heard of ari shafir of you um, I think so. I think he's somebody in the Joe Rogan site, guys, like a comedian, maybe. Let me look him up. Sabrina will be mad that we didn't. I'm give so him sorry, Sabrina. Props. Ari Shafir. I don't know this guy. He is an American comedian, so you are right about Ooh, that. Oh, yay. I will look him up and uh, look up his stuff because I've never heard of him before, and I'm sure that'll be good content. <laughs> oh, really? said, carry a gun, Amala. <laughs> <laughs> I need to do Pack something. Him. You know, I started taking boxing classes. You know, I'm one of those personalities where I like, I'll get to something new and I'll do it really hardcore for like three weeks. <laughs> and then I'm like, okay, on to the next thing. Yeah. I'll be like so hardcore about it. I'll be like roller skating, roller skating every day, new pair of roller skates, whatever, boxing. Oh my gosh, How, what ounce glove do I need? Let me get into it. I'm doing all this stuff. On to the next thing, on to the next thing. Um, I'm not good at consistency. Maybe it's I just haven't found something I'm, uh, I'm passionate about. Though. You need to watch some Jocko Willink videos. He'll get you disciplined. Yeah, he's and... like, I'm waking up at 3.15 in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> doing 50 push-ups. Right. <laughs> oh my gosh anyways guys that's our show for today we went a little bit longer for you guys because you guys seem to be excited about this one and interested in this one thank you guys so much for watching please like subscribe click the notification bell to be notified every single time we post a new video for you guys and fill out the survey in the description down below it's asking you how you feel about the show what you want to see in, uh, in terms of changes made to the show what guests you want to have on and it will sign you up for our email list. Well, you'll get a personalized piece of content for me every single month. You'll get to join our Discord where we can have actually free-flowing, open conversations, say what we really want to say uh, to each other, uh, and be hopefully saved from censorship over there. Also, when my clothing line drops, or at least pieces of the clothing line drop, you guys will be the first to know, the first to be told on the email list. So, uh, fill out the survey and sign up below. What else do I need to say to you guys? I think I think that's it. We have a couple of guests coming up on the show uh, within the next couple of weeks. Michaela Peterson, Deborah So. So be on the lookout for that. I'm going on the Adam Carolla podcast tomorrow, and that comes out on Wednesday. So also be on the lookout for that. And we'll give you guys clips and fun little videos from that. I am very excited. I've never been on like a comedy focused podcast before. So hopefully I Just, bring some jokes. Yeah, make sure you tell that joke, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Makes me so nervous. I'm like, almost like Adam. Uh, yeah. So why did the uh, chicken cross the road? Oh, oh. It must be so gross to be a comedian because people just expect you to be funny all the time. They're just like, tell a joke, be I funny, know. dance, the, boy. The scariest thing would be like walking out on a stage when you're doing stand up and like everyone's just looking at you like, oh, make me laugh. Yeah, never. It's not the life for me. I could never do it. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. Like, subscribe, click the notification <laughs> bell, and drink plenty of water. Bye, guys.